Hey, good morning, everyone. Here we are, bright another end of another work week. It's Friday, and uh, I'm sure everybody's excited for the weekend. Except maybe for those that uh, had the week off, i.e., uh, uh, Kevin, uh, uh, kids at school. Uh, I was probably back to school coming next Monday. So enjoy the rest of your vacation, and I hope you had a great camping trip. Uh, not sure if we're going to have a uh, tug tonight, but I hope so. And so i got to check in with uh, Kevin and Nancy on that one. So uh, here we are in Revelation. And uh, with our classic uh, paintings that we've been using. And today we are, in, we are finishing up the, uh, what I call the gap, uh, the uh, pause. Uh, and we're in Chapter 7. And it's this little section here, if you can see it, over there on the, uh, the top of it, it says 144,000 Jews. It's kind of like uh, right next to, uh, not to what, where his thumb is, where his left thumb is, but uh, the, the next little pane over with. Uh, last pane there would be the seventh seal. So we're in that little pause in between. That's where the ceiling of the 144,000, as we found out yesterday, and today we're going to finish up that chapter. So let me uh, bring over my little chart here and uh, reiterate what we were saying. Right now we're in the, uh, where that little red and gray box is, the pause. And that's the basic the structure of the whole, the whole book of uh, Revelation. You get the seven seals with a pause in between six and seven. That lasts all of uh, one chapter, chapter seven. And then you got the seven trumpets, and between sixth and seventh trumpet, there's a big pause. It's actually chapters 10 through 14. And it's basically like giving extra information to help understand uh, what's going on around this same time. And like, uh, I'm starting to notice, I mentioned it yesterday, that it seems like the pause is like uh, a little bit of a current events, what's going on now, and also looks a little bit into the future. Or it could be in the case of like chapter 12, uh, you're going to see that there's going to be a little bit of a history lesson, and then it's going to talk about uh, the uh, current events. So it's uh, each chapter is kind of split up between uh, uh, before and after kind of an effect. Then, then uh, Seven Seals, we do have a slight pause, but it's only like one or two verses. It's actually one verse. It's chapter 15 and verse 16 of that chapter is a slight little pause. So uh, that's the basic structure. And again, right now we're in the seals. Here's a little more breakdown of the seals. We did the first four horsemen. And then we did the martyrs being under the under the throne. And yesterday was, uh, I mean, uh, then... Uh, it was a cosmic changes, and we found out that about 25% of the uh, world population had already died. I'm starting to think that uh, a lot of that was uh, uh, might have been the Ezekiel 38 war might have happened in that seal too. Not sure. This is speculation. Uh, or it could be that uh, you know during the rapture uh, with all the chaos and people disappearing from cars and planes, and then and then you combine in uh, the war. Uh, Antichrist coming on the scene, that that could have been what, uh, how so many people died. Right now we're talking about the 144,000 of the 12 tribes and how they're different than the churches or the Gentiles. And that's kind of what I want to look at a little bit today. Let me turn myself down just a little bit here. I'm pegging myself on the meter. Okay, that should be a little bit better on your ears. So the first thing I want to kind of uh, go through is uh, I'll start by doing some reading. So let me get my, did I say a prayer yet? I don't even think I said a prayer yet. No, I don't remember. It's tough when you get old. Okay, we'll say another one. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, I want to praise you and thank you so much for this time to look into your word. And there we go. Uh, Always look to you for guidance in it, that you can help us to understand what's uh, going on here and that we can 
uh, learn from it and uh, understand you even better. And uh, Lord, I look so forward to that day when I get to see you in person and to and to worship you in, uh, in person and that we get to see what you have in store for us for eternity. In Jesus' precious name I pray, amen. So what we'll do here is we'll kind of flip back and forth between this little contrast here. I'll get myself out of the way here. And uh, just start reading. We're in Revelation 9, 7, 9. And it's going to start describing some people that are in the throne room. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues. Now you look at that, and it almost tells you, boy, that sounds like everybody. But it's a little misleading. Because uh, if you really think about the Jews of today, they are in just about every country in the world. So you can't really say that they're all in Israel. So keep that in mind as we read through this. Stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. I want you to think about that word palms in their hands. And I have this little uh, contrast here that I'm just going to bring over here real quick. And I believe that we are represented by the 24 elders. And I'm going, to, I'm going to run through those verses again a little bit. And what we're going to be talking about right now is what is called the tribulation saints. And by the way, I truly believe that this particular uh, chapter in verse uh, 9, through, uh, 9 through 17 here is talking about the future. Uh, it hasn't happened yet. So it's a little bit of a prophecy within a prophecy. But I want you to notice some differences between the elders as we read some of these passages I'm going to bring up next. So for tribulation saints, they don't have crowns. They have palms in their hands. They're saved out of the tribulation. You'll see that in a minute. These stand before the thrones. These serve him day and night. And, and John doesn't recognize who they are. Now when we look at the 24 elders, uh, we'll look at those again. They have crowns, they have harps, they don't have any palms. They're kept out of the tribulation, as we'll see in, in Revelation 3.10. They sit on thrones, we, and uh, we re reiterate that in Revelation, and also in 1 Corinthians and 1 Peter. And they reign as kings and priests. And you see that in 1 Corinthians 6 and 1 Peter and Revelations also. So let's keep that in mind as we look at... Uh, some of these verses. But first we're going to take a look at uh, there's people with palms in their hands. And in Leviticus 23 it talks about uh, palms. Okay. Also in the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, Sabbath, Sabbath and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. Sounding very Jewish, right? Uh, we're in Leviticus here, this is the uh, law, as it was given by Moses, to the Jewish people. And they're talking about uh, Sabbath. And you shall take you on the first day the boroughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the boroughs of thick trees, and the willows of brook, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. And you shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. And you shall dwell in booths seven days. They call this the Feast of Booths. It's supposed to represent uh, the time that they spent, the 40 years that they spent in the wilderness. All that are Israeli born shall dwell in booths. And they build these booths usually in their backyards. And they, uh, and they cover them. They're like a, they cover them uh, kind of loosely so that you can still see the stars in the sky. Uh, and it gives you a sense that you're kind of like out in the wilderness. Continuing in verse 43, that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. And Moses declared unto the children of Israel the feast of the Lord. 
So again, very Jewish. Uh, is Moses, and he's telling the children of Israel, this is one of their feasts. Also see in Nehemiah, uh, similar passages, and uh, shot in 8.5, and Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. This is the book they found in Jerusalem when they were starting to rebuild the temple. So they read in the book and the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. Now, the uh, the book of the law, as read, mentioned here, is Leviticus. And on the second day were gathered together the chief of the fathers of all the people, the priests and the Levites, unto Ezra the scribe, even to understanding the words of the law. And they found written in the law which the Lord had commanded by Moses that the children of Israel should dwell in booths in the feast of the seventh month. And that they should publish and proclaim in all their cities and in Jerusalem, saying, Go forth unto the mount and pinch olive branches and pine branches and myrtle branches and palm branches and branches of thick trees to make booths as it is written. So the people went forth and brought them and made themselves booths, every one upon the roof of his house, and in their courts, and in the courts of the house of God, and in the street of the water gate, and in the street of the great of Ephraim. And all the congregation of them that were come again out of the captivity made booths and sat under the booths for since the days of Joshua, the son of Nun, until the day had not the children of Israel done so. And there was very great gladness. This is actually the first time since uh, Joshua's time frame that they actually celebrated this feast. So I guess the, 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 this particular uh, law had gotten lost uh, and was refound after the Babylonian Empire and they were coming back in, uh, to rebuild Jerusalem. And finish up in Nehemiah. Also day by day from the first day until the last day, he read in the book of the law of God and they kept the feast seven days and on the eighth day, was a solemn assembly according unto the manner. So I bring this up to kind of get an idea of where the palm comes from. And the most famous verse, I think most of us have heard many sermons on, is Palm Sunday. And we see that in John 12, 12 and 13. On the next day, much people that were come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. We also see, and I want to jump over to Revelation 5, 8. And this is the verse that uh, kind of talks about us, who I believe is the church. I just want to review but it's fresh in our mind when we kind of look at the differences between the two. So start in verse 8. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. You know, they have harps. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Some of that sounds very familiar, doesn't it, between the two? Except for so far the, uh, the harp. I mean, the, uh, <clears throat> but his word changes. It has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on earth. Can we jump over to Revelation 7? Oh, no, back to Revelation 7. 10. So that was the uh, uh, brief overview of uh, us and who the uh, 24 elders are. So Revelation 7.10 says, and cried with a lot, uh, we're well, back to those people that were uh, we met in, in verse 9 who were standing in front of the throne, and cried with a loud voice saying, salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. <clears throat> And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God. So you notice how uh, elders is identified here and the angels and the four beasts. And this, so this is a separate group from those there. 
continuing with, with the, uh, the, this group of people, Revelation 12, 7, 12, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now we get a little bit of an explanation coming up next. And one of the elders answering, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? So again, this is one of the elders talking to John. And listen to what John says. And John says, And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are the... So in other words, he doesn't know, but he says unto the elder, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, that being the elder said to John, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Now at this point in time, in between the uh, sixth and seventh seal, this hasn't happened yet. Because the great tribulation, as described by Jesus, doesn't happen until after the abomination of desolation. So this is a little bit of a prophecy within a prophecy. <clears throat> now this is a vision that John is seeing. So it's uh, not necessarily happening right this minute. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. Okay. This doesn't sound like the throne room, does it? So to read it again. Therefore are they before the throne of God. They're not on thrones. That on, on, uh, and serve him day and night in his temple. Uh, and right now, there's no temple. Uh, the temple actually is probably being built at this time frame in Jerusalem as uh, during this phase of the uh, of the tribulation. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them, so that God's going to be with them. So back over to Revelation 5, 8. So I just wanted uh, a few more uh, things to, uh, to look at. But again, this is back to us. So we bring over a little uh, cross-reference thing here. So we talked about uh, the elders. The elders have crowns on. They have harps. They didn't say anything about palms. Uh, we haven't uh, mentioned the uh, tribulation yet. We sit on thrones. Uh, we're, going to, we're, going to, we're going to review these verses. Now, the tribulation saints, which we've already read, didn't hear anything about crowns. They have palms in their hands. They're saved out of the tribulation. You heard that part. And they stand before the thrones. And they're going to be serving him day and night. And John didn't recognize them. So I want you to see the contrast between them. So back to Revelation. So this is us again, just a review. When he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Okay, that's us now. But also over in Revelation 3.10, this is where we got the differences are about, the, about who we are. So Revelation 3.10, this is during the uh, church. I think it's Sardis, if I remember correct. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which it shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. That's that part there that says it will be kept out of the tribulation. <clears throat> Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Now, this is Jesus before the rapture. He's talking about the seven churches. And he's telling us to make sure we, uh, that he's going to be coming, that we hold fast, and that we're going to be getting crowns. And then all of a sudden, 1 Corinthians 6, 2. Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? 
is talking about. Uh, remember, this is Paul talking to Christians in Corinth. So we're going to be judging the world. Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? So again, uh, reflecting the fact that we're going to be on thrones, that we're going to be well, we're going to be leading with Christ, and we're not going to be before Christ. Worshiping, uh, well, we'll still be worshiping God, uh, Christ, but uh, trying to show the, uh, the differences between uh, the tribulation saints and us. I think the uh, the thing I, I most want to uh, reiterate too is that uh, there's a lot of people out there that want to say <clears throat> that uh, there'll be no salvation uh, during the uh, tribulation of anyone but non uh, but, but Jews. And when I mentioned that part about uh, being uh, all kindreds, tongues, nations, and people, uh, kind of indicative that along with the Jews that get saved, there's going to be Gentiles also. Okay, over in Revelation 1, 6, too. Let's see where I'm at in my notes. Again, uh, so it was, it we'll be on thrones and judging. And this is, uh, again, this is Jesus talking to uh, John. And he hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. So we're going to be made kings and priests. I want to uh, just reflect uh, on that part. You know, it mentions that uh, he's going to be serving him day and night uh, in the temple. And I know there's a lot of people that uh, they get really confused by that. So I thought I would bring it up. Because it's actually in Ezekiel, and I'm not going to, if you look at Ezekiel chapter 40 through 48, I think is the total amount of the area, 46, it basically describes the Millennium Kingdom all the way to uh, uh, when, uh, the, you know, the, uh, the thousand years is over and the new Jerusalem comes down. So like Ezekiel got this huge prophecy, and I think a lot of people don't realize it's there. There's also one in Isaiah uh, towards the end. I think it uh, starts in like uh, Isaiah 63 or 64. That's two, two is about, there's actually more about the Millennium Kingdom in the Old Testament than there is in the New Testament. So it's something to keep in mind for you guys that are, trying, are curious about uh, what it might be like in the Millennium Kingdom. But here it talks about what, uh, what it's going to be like for the Jews in the Millennium Kingdom. And I just picked out a few verses. The so starting in Ezekiel 42. This is Ezekiel talking about the vision. In the visions of God brought he me into the land of Israel and set me upon a very high mountain by which was as the frame of a city on the south. So here Ezekiel is up on a high mountain and God is showing him this big city. It's basically Jerusalem. And it's going to go through a, big, a very detailed explanation of what he sees. And again, I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm going to, a few, a few verses in chapter 40 and a few, and a few more in chapter 43. I just want to show what they're saying about the uh, uh, worshiping in the temple. And the man said unto me, Son of man, behold with thine eyes and hear with thine ears and set thine heart upon all that I shall show thee. For to the intent that I might show them <coughs> unto thee art thou brought hither. Declare all that thou seest to the house of Israel. So again, this is a prophecy to give to Israel. There's a lot of information in there that kind of helps us see what the, what the uh, Millennium Kingdom is going to look like. <clears throat> Our role in the Millennium Kingdom, I think, is going to be a lot different than what some of this you, you're going to hear. So I don't think we're going to be doing sacrifices in the temple. I think that's all Jewish. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure what our role is going to be completely. I have a feeling... We're going to be ruling and reigning with Christ. So I think we're going to be in other parts of the world while the uh, most of the Jews that come out of the tribulation are going to be in Jerusalem serving God directly in the, uh, in the temple and in, the, in Jerusalem. And we will go there to visit uh, for uh, a couple of times a year. It will be mandatory. But that, uh, most of the time we won't necessarily be in Jerusalem itself. That's just a, a feeling of mine. I, I can't. There's lots of verses about it. When you start really getting into it, it's kind of fun to think about. I'm jumping now to Ezekiel 43. 
And this has a little more to do with the uh, temple itself. And behold, the glory of God of Israel came from the way of the east, and his voice was like the noise of many waters, and the earth shined with his glory. So God is coming to reside in the temple. That's what these verses are leading to. And it was according to the appearance of the vision which I saw, even according to the vision that I saw when I came to destroy the city. And the visions were like the visions that I saw by the river Chelbar, and I fell upon my face. That was, he's in awe. You know, he's seeing, he's seeing God himself. <coughs> Sorry. I'm into the temple area. I might mention too, this temple is the Millennium Temple. It's not the one that they're going to build uh, during the tribulation. That's the uh, that's the third temple that's coming up. And this Millennium Temple is a lot different. Uh, Ezekiel 40 through 43 uh, describes this temple in detail uh, if you want to study it. You actually go online and actually look up. They have really some really cool pictures. I meant to grab one, but actually... Some really cool pictures of it. I might try to grab one real quick if, uh, if I got time here. Or maybe I'll get it for tomorrow. But anyways, continuing. And the glory of the Lord came into the house by the way of the gate, whose prospect is toward the east. So the Spirit took me up and brought me into the inner court, and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house. So again, this is a vision by Ezekiel. He's watching, uh, he's, uh, he's actually inside this temple watching uh, God come into the temple. He comes in from the east gate. And I heard him speaking unto me out of the house, and the man stood by me. And he said unto me, Son of man, the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet, where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever. And my holy name shall the house of Israel no more defile. Neither they nor their kings by their whoredoms nor by their carcasses of their kings in their high places. So that's the verse there that describes exactly where the children of Israel are going to be forever after the tribulation. They're going to be, uh, I think it's basically the thousand years uh, so basically, you know, for, uh, I'm guessing it's, a, it's not, I wouldn't say punishment, because it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a beautiful world. It's going to be re- ruled and reigned by Jesus Christ himself. But it's more that, uh, you know, for the last 2,000 years, uh, the Jewish people have not recognized Jesus Christ as uh, as their uh, Messiah. And so it, uh, they're going to basically be spending about 1,000 years doing what they should have been doing uh, back, you know, for the last 2,000 years. That's my take on it. Uh, but of course, it's going to be in a perfect atmosphere. And even uh, and even uh, as we'll read in some other parts of Revelation, uh, it's going to be a really nice time. It's going to be a joy. Everybody's going to want to be there. We might even be jealous of them uh, that they'll be there serving the Lord in the temple. So again, Ezekiel 43. Uh, I'm not taking up too much time. 48. And what uh, Ezekiel probably saw, and this is the temple that they're talking about here in uh, in Revelation. So back to finish up our uh, study here. So on in Revelation seven sixteen, They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the land which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living water, fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. So I just want to finish up uh, that this particular episode is going to happen way down the road, mm-hmm. way at the end of Revelation. Mm-hmm talk about it again, but just to give you a little preview, it's in Revelation 21, starting at verse 1 through 7, we'll read for now. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, 
prepares a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all their tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. And he that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. So I just wanted to kind of read that. That's that's the uh, that's the uh, basic end of all. That's after the rebel, after the uh, uh, Millennium Kingdom, after the Tribulation, Millennium Kingdom. And that's what uh, is talked about there. I believe in Revelation seven seventeen, is that uh, finally when it's all said and done, that uh, we're going to be a glorious existence, all of us. There will be no such thing as any difference between <coughs> Jews or Gentiles. It will be all the same. All living in the glory of God. So on that note, I will uh, <coughs> end for today. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time, for looking at your word. And thank you so much for all that you give us and that you uh, give us this vision to get us excited about uh, our, new, our new world that we're going to be seeing so- soon. Uh, and looking forward to that day, Lord. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. So I will talk to you on Monday. Uh, and for the... Uh, some of you, I might talk to you uh, tonight at Tug. So uh, we're going to be uh, doing uh, Chosen Episode 5. It's about the uh, the wedding supper. And uh, I'm going to explain a little bit about the Galilean wedding. So it's a pretty neat episode. So we'll talk to you later.